So in this episode, we're gonna try to finish up the Crown Vic swap and try to finish up all the little detail work I got left to do. Uh, it's gotta get the brake lines hooked up. It's gotta get a brake booster installed because this truck didn't have power brakes to begin with. And then it needs the steering shaft hooked up so we can actually steer the front wheels with the steering wheel in this truck and go down the road. Um, a few other odds and ends, we'll kind of just go through those step by step and I'll show you guys the products that I use and how I solve all these problems. Okay, so I got this column back together. It took me way too many tries to get this thing back together as far as making mistakes and putting the bearings in and those aftermarket bearings fit kind of funny. And So I'm not going to show you guys all my trials and tribulations there for working through that. Bottom line is columns cleaned up, put back in, has a smaller steering wheel in it now. There's the automatic gear selector and the gear indicator there on top of it now so it's an actual factory Ford column in a Ford truck. The bigger part is that this length of column is now set up for the length that I'm planning to use with the truck so the steering linkage is set out here at the final determined length it's going to be. So I think the other column we had was a little bit shorter than this one. So it should be ready to go now. I use this adapter from Borgeson. This is uh, part number 313449. I'll so I can post a link to this down below. It has a, uh, this goes from a three quarter inch 36 spline to a three quarter inch DD shaft. So this slides over the end of the existing 36 splines in the steering column, which is a three quarter inch. And then I'm gonna adapt it to this piece of universal DD shaft I have here. So I'll have to figure out how to cut that down. But now that you can see, we look up in the end of this adapter and it's set up for that DD type shaft so so my concern here is I'm gonna have too many universal joints and not enough support in the steering system so the Crown Vic has this universal joint down at the bottom from the factory and then I'm gonna add another universal joint in the center and then I'm gonna go up to this steering column my fear is that as this thing starts to turn it's not gonna have enough support and it's gonna allow this shaft to try to walk side to side in here looks like this isn't gonna work I'll turn the wheel real quick and show you guys what it does So you can see it kind of works, but I don't know, it seems pretty, pretty hokey. There's a lot of leverage out here in this end of the, the shaft and it lets the thing really just flop around too much. I bought a piece of 24 inch, uh, three quarter inch DD shaft, just a universal piece I bought off of Amazon for like 24 bucks or something or $20. Um, so then I bought another U-joint for the end. This goes from the three-quarter inch DD shaft to the Ford Triangle, Ford Mustang, Ford uh, V, whatever you guys want to call it. I see it called a lot of different things. So my plan is, is to go straight from uh, the Crown Vic power strain rack here, which has this Ford V or Mustang V, whatever you want to call it on here. Then run this piece of three quarter inch shaft straight up to this joint. But to do that, obviously I got a, an angle here that's not gonna work. And then so obviously when I get this shaft run up to the steering column, there needs to be some sort of U-joint here. So I'm gonna reuse that DD adapter U-joint that I had on the last setup that was hanging out here in the middle. And I'm just gonna adapt it here on the end and using a piece of this old DD shaft that I had um, use it to connect these two. It's not an ideal setup, but it works for what I got and I don't really feel like sending anything else back to the store, so I'm going to try to just make this setup work for me. So what I'm going to do here is go through and try to figure out how much of this shaft I need sticking out exposed for this U-joint to clamp onto. So to do that, I'm going to just uh, put this piece in this, put the U-joint on the extra length of shaft that I have here and Kind of set it where the shaft just comes through. I'm going to mark this, so the chalk marker. And that shows me I need about this much sticking out of the end of this uh, steering adapter I have here. So I'll just take some calipers and quickly transfer this measurement. And then take a measurement here. 
You're gonna say I need this much, this much of this DD shaft hanging out to the end here, and I'm just gonna cut off the rest of this. Okay, this so left me a little, uh, looks like an inch by inch, like a two inch uh, connector, like a union here. So just plug that in. I guess we'll snug it up a little bit. And then my uh, DD to DD union that I have. We'll go here. What I'm gonna do here is measure the length to try to make these faces look as like parallel to each other as they can. And just take a measurement between the two faces of these U joints now. And it looks like I'm right at, wow, that's like spot on 12 inches. Um, so I'm going to add an inch to each side of that, so that'll give me enough length to go an inch inside of this U-joint and an inch inside of this U-joint. So I'm going to cut it to 14 inches total, and then we'll test fit it up. Okay, so I just cut that down to 14 and dropped it in place, and it looks like it's going to line up pretty well for me now. Okay, moment of truth, I'll go spin the wheel on the inside and see what this thing, uh, how much it walks around now. I'll tell you this, just turning the steering wheel on the inside feels a lot smoother now. Before it had a lot of like binding and you could actually feel it back feeding to the steering wheel as this U-joint in the center here was flopping and moving around. It feels very, very solid, very, very smooth now. So I think I'll just go ahead and tighten these connections up and I'll call this a day. Okay, so onto the brakes. Uh, this truck didn't have power brakes to begin with, so I'm gonna add power brakes now that I've got uh, disc brakes with this Crown Vic set up and the Explorer rear end. Uh, so what I did is I got this Cardone, Cardone, um, supposed to be an OEM factory replacement for a 69 F100 with power brakes. Uh, this was part number 503-515. I just bought this off of Rock Auto. It turns out that this doesn't really fit this truck exactly. So I bought this uh, mount bracket kit from Pirate Jack and this looks like it's for a truck that actually had pack factory power brakes to begin with. So this kit appears to fit like a factory motorcraft type brake booster. But this brake booster seems like it's different and it looks like it's different from other brake boosters that I see online that claim to fit a 68, 69, F100 with power brakes. Um, this one has this rod that sticks out the back which has like a 7 16 female threaded hole in it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try to put this stuff together and make it all work here. So what I did to begin with is just uh, went to the hardware store and bought a 7 16 bolt and put it in the back of this universal or this factory replacement brake booster master cylinder combo and stuck it through the firewall just to see where things lined up here and then kind of estimated the length I was going to need to uh, to make my own pedal mount for the back of this supposedly factory replacement brake booster master cylinder combo. So here's what I did so far. This is a uh, 7 16 by 20 thread bolt. As you saw before, the bolt had a uh, head on it. I just put it in a bandsaw and I cut the head off. And so now it just gives me a, a flat rod with a, some sort of adjustment out of here with a jam head on it. So originally this truck had a some sort of a rod that kind of has a drop center to it like this that actually hooks up to the pedal underneath the dash. But you can tell that this doesn't look like this. So what I'm going to do, this piece came with the kit that I got just as an uh, alternate rod. So I'm going to use this part. So I'm going to use the end with a bushing in it to go through the original OEM pedal brake pedal bolt. If you can see it fits in here really nicely. There's not really any play or anything. So it should take up a lot of that uh, slop that's in there. So my plan is to figure out where to cut this thing. So I can somehow take this and weld it in a fashion 
where it drops down from the center. So if I cut this bracket I got like through here somewhere and then just weld this bolt to this bracket after taking the powder coating off. That should give me enough adjustability um, in and out with the threads here and hopefully give me a nice straight shot to keep this shaft in line with the back of the brake booster here. So I'm going to put it back in the truck one more time, try to figure out where this angle should be and how I'm trying to figure out where this angle should be and figure out how much drop I need to put on this to keep this actuator rod as straight as I can get it. Alright, sorry this is some pretty crude video here. I just mounted the master cylinder with this new bolt sticking out the back of it into the firewall where it's going to end up being permanently mounted. And I'm just trying to understand where this rod's going to land inside the cab in, in relation to the brake pedal and the mounting bolt that goes through the brake pedal inside the cab here. So here I just took the TIG and TIG welded this bracket that I cut down to the end of this bolt that we had here and so now I got a bracket that kind of has a nice drop down to it and that little plastic bushing's back in here. So I'll go ahead and put some black paint on this just to keep it from rusting and then stick this thing back in the truck hopefully one final time. So master cylinder's in place ready to go. Um, this was that raw steel color like it looked like online and so what I did is just painted the booster part of it the uh, some anodized gold color just some AutoZone engine paint here is all that is and it kind of gives it that look like it's the what's the knuckle metal hydride coating or whatever that stuff is and then the master cylinder itself I actually just took some clear coat and some clear spray paint and spray painted that so it wouldn't rust as much and got it just bolted on the truck and plumbed up and ready to go there. And if you look back behind the master cylinder, you can see that I just used the two brackets off of that kit and took the inside mechanical like linkage out of the center of them and just used the two side brackets there and bolted those straight to the firewall. And those hold the brake booster up and those let the actuator rod go through the center of it and into the firewall and actually actually slide in there and tie into the pedal inside. I had to open the bolt holes up in this just a tiny bit just to make the thing align to the back of this new master cylinder because it seems like there's again a lot of variation in uh, what a lot of these aftermarket manufacturers are showing as the standard. So a little bit of fit and finish and the thing bolted in there and looks like it's going to hold nice and solid for me now. All right, so onto the brake lines here. What I'm going to do is try to use as much of the original crown bit brake line as I can. Um, so, interestingly enough, on the outbound side of the frame here on the passenger side, there's actually a slot already cut in the frame where, I guess, Ford had just put some notches and stuff in the frame for different mounts and pieces. And So this bracket that came off the junkyard brake line out of the crown Vic, Looks like it'll actually just plop right in this hole here for a, for a good place to bolt this brake mount up to. So it'll hold the brake line nice and tight to the frame and out of the way. It won't get pinched there and it still has plenty, uh, plenty of travel slop here. So then it turns into a hard line once it goes back under the frame. And I think at the junkyard this actually had a nice contour in it. So if you've got a front end that doesn't have bent up brake lines, I think these got snagged somewhere along the way and kind of just messed the brake line. So what I'm going to try to do here is put this hard line back where it was from the factory and kind of make it follow the contours of this Crown Vic crossmember and kind of tuck in and follow the curves around here and go on across where it's nice and tucked in out of the way and then go back inside of the factory Ford F100 frame rail here and make it go back to the, the brake junction block back here. So to do that, I just got a uh, cheap universal brake line bender pliers here. I'm just going to kind of put some bends in this thing and work it in place, eh, kind of back where it goes.
Okay, it's certainly not beautiful, but we're kind of putting things back in place, so it looks like it'll work fine. I'm not too thrilled with the way that this piece uh, makes a, a big, like, four inch by four inch gap here. I'm worried I'm going to need that space for an exhaust manifold or something to come down through here, but I guess if I have to move it, I can always cut it or put a union in there or kind of rebend it, reflare the end, or do something crazy. So we'll. Uh, I'm going to let that hang out for now. I might have to go back and fix that later if it's in the way. But it at least kind of tucks back up along its factory routing path. It's not as nice as it was, but it gets me back to this side. And so now I've got a factory brake line here, the 68 Ford truck brake system. So now there's this proportioning block to deal with here. And I'm not sure if it actually proportions anything or if it's uh, just a, essentially like a fancy T-block. So it obviously splits the front pressure line from the master cylinder. It comes down here, it has one input, then it has two outputs, one for the front driver's side wheel, one for the front passenger side wheel. I think what I'm gonna do is just cut that out of there and put a T in it, and then put a manual proportioning valve somewhere else in the system so that we can proportion the rear brake pressure. Because I'm afraid now that I've gone to disc brakes all the way around, it's gonna put way too much pressure on the rear brakes and cause this thing to want to spin out once you step on the brakes real hard. So the proportioning valve that was in here is now removed. Um, so now we just have two lines coming through here. The top one went to the front brakes and the rear went to, or the bottom went to the rear brakes. So they put two different fitting sizes on here. It looks like they're both 3 16 line, but they put a thicker, maybe like a, what would that be, a 5 16 fitting on the bottom to make sure that you couldn't actually swap the front and rear brake um, positions in that proportioning valve there. So what I'm gonna do is for the front, I'm just gonna put a T in here and I'm gonna T off to go to the left front, right front, and then with the back, I'm gonna have to just use a union. So the only union size I have though is a 3824. The 3824 won't go into these larger fittings that are in here. So what I'll do is just uh, cut these off and then reflare them and put a smaller 3H24 fitting actually on the uh, the rear brake line here and just put a put this union back together. That way the rear brake line will be connected. So here's what I'm with these brake lines. Got the one that was factory installed to the rear brakes, to the rear axle back here. I just cut the original fitting off of it, reflared it in here, and did the same thing for the line that goes up to the master cylinder to feed the rear axle. So these are just tied together straight through now. They don't go through the proportioning valve anymore. And then the front brake line, I've got just going to a T. Again, it's the factory fitting that's on here with the original 3H24 flare nut, and it's just going into a 3H24T, which is for a 3 16 hard line. So then what I'm gonna have to do is adapt these Crown Vic lines, which I've run here inside the frame, and then the one from the driver's side, it comes under the frame, and it's sticking out right here. So I'm gonna have to reflare these lines. But the problem with these lines that are from Ford is that they're coated with something. So I think technically these are metric lines, but they work pretty well with a just 3 16 style fitting, which is the, again, the 3 8 24. But the problem is that with this coating on here, it makes the outside line diameter too thick to fit into this, to this 3 8 24 fitting. So when I try to put these together, you can see that it just won't, it won't slide on there. So what you have to do is remove this rubber coating that's on the outside of this line here. It's like a plastic rubber, some sort of anti-corrosion thing. So probably the cheapest and easiest way to do this is just take a razor blade and uh, just cut the coating back enough. You can see it just kind of cuts off of there. And it just peels up and you can see the metal down below it. And so you kind of just work your way around. You can go ahead and just slide your flare nut right on the end there. So obviously with this one, I'm gonna to have to slide this, cut the coating back some more because I have to slide the nut back far enough to put my flaring tool on the end and flare this and take it all off. So 
I've got another inch or so of uh, protective coating to pull off of here, but. Okay, so to make up for the rest of the line that I don't have, or to add some new line, I just went to O'Reilly's and bought a, it's like a 51 inch length of this uh, 3 16 line. This is this new uh, PVF line. I've never used this PVF line before, but they claim that you can bend it by hand without a tubing bender. They claim that it flares easier, it's corrosion resistant. And uh, so this stick was like less than $5, so. I just bought a piece of it. It comes with two uh, flare nuts, one on each end, and it comes with a flared end on each end. So I guess it kind of saves you from having to make two ends if you want to cut them off and use them that way or however it works out. I'm just going to bend this up and kind of make the connection between my T and my two Crown Vic lines with uh, a couple of short pieces of this. Okay, so plumbing's in place where it's supposed to be, and connections are all flared and made. I need to go through and tighten these down and leak check them now. But uh, you can see the original line goes to the passenger side, Crown Vic comes up here, and the driver's side just comes underneath the frame rail down here. So then what I did is just took some of that new line that I bought at O'Reilly's and made a piece to connect this to the T and then the Passenger side also got that just uh, look up inside of here. You can see it flares up or it turns up and then uh, comes back down and ties into that T there. So that's all just fed by the front part of the master cylinder. And so then the rear, uh, same thing, it just comes down and directly ties into the rear axle line that goes back now. This, uh, this fuel line will come out of here. So that's still uh, attached to the tank in the truck. There's still fuel in there. So I just cut the line now, the fuel's going to leak out, but besides that, I'm going to find some clamps to actually secure this 3 16 line to the frame here and hold that in place so it's not constantly uh, vibrating around and causing problems and possibly wearing a hole in one of the brake lines. So I'll order a couple clamps tonight, probably just some cheap Amazon ones, and tie that into the frame so it sits back in there real nicely. Everything's tucked in out of the way. And uh, so that gets the brake lines finished up, ready to go. The Steering, we saw that, so the steering's in, ready to go. The, so now we can steer it and we can stop it. So one final piece here on the Crown Vic front swap was to get the sway bar mounted. And so again, kind of a freaky thing, the factory bolts from the Crown Vic almost line up with these holes in the frame. And there's an existing hole here in this 68, 69 truck frame that almost comes perfectly in line with where the sway bar I think should be. Um, so the sway bar you can pull back and forth and what I mean by that is if you look at these uh, the tie links here down from the bottom of the sway bar up to the top of the steering knuckle and if you pull the sway bar back and forth what I mean by that is if you slide it to take these bolt holes and mount them forward or backward in the frame, then the angle of this link bar will actually change. And so what I did is I tried to set that link so that it's perfectly straight up and down. And it should give me the best mechanical advantage to take the, to use that sway bar as close to a factory Crown Vic setup as possible there. So that's how I set those and I just made sure those links were perfectly straight up and down. And then clamp my sway bar up against the bottom of the frame and popped a couple holes in it and put some bolts in there from the hardware store, bolt it in place, and it's ready to go.